The president yesterday reflected the reality of global opinion, which also matters. Our support for Israel is not diminished, but we have had concerns and we have expressed those concerns about the prosecution of this military campaign, even while acknowledging that it's Hamas that started this and it's Hamas that is continuing it. The president yesterday, you alluded to those remarks, he said that Israel was engaged in indiscriminate bombing in Gaza, and that, 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 that is what had cost, cost Israel international global support. Um, does the president believe, based on those comments, that Israel's conduct in this war thus far has been in accordance with international law? We, we have every expectation that, uh, that Israel will do exactly what they say they're doing, which is to continue to go after the terrorist leaders and to do so in a way that minimizes civilian harm, as I said in my opening statement, as the president said. That's their intent, um, and it's important that the results match that intent. Uh, is the military strike, military campaign by Israel, is it surgical or indiscriminate according to the administration at this point? We're not going to armchair quarterback this from this particular podium. Uh, uh, let me finish. We're not going to characterize every airstrike. We're not going to speak for Israeli military operations. The president was reflecting a concern that we have had for some time and will continue to have as this military operation proceeds about the need for reducing civilian harm and being as precise and careful and deliberate as possible. It negotiated in Doha. We know what they have proven capable of doing to young women. While we all want the war to end as soon as possible to stop the human suffering and to establish conditions for an enduring peace, something that the president and the entire team continues to pursue. A unilateral ceasefire with a terrorist group like Hamas 
is not the answer. As the president has said, Hamas could release the hostages today. They could surrender all those responsible for the October 7th attacks and lay down their arms, and the war would stop immediately. If they really cared about the Palestinian people the way they claim to, they would do this. That they haven't done it, I think, speaks volumes. But yesterday, the UN, UN General Assembly approved a resolution demanding ceasefire. Uh, what else uh, would have to happen in Gaza for this administration, for the U.S. to agree with a ceasefire? Uh, how long can the president afford uh, going to uh, support Israel uh, like that, unconditionally like this? As we said, we don't think now's the time for a ceasefire. Uh, and in that resolution, there was no condemnation of what Hamas has, has, has done, not, not, not any, and no express support for Israel's right to defend itself. So, of course, we weren't going to sign up to that. We don't believe a ceasefire right now, a general ceasefire, is the right thing to do, because what it would do is validate what Hamas did on October 7th. It's basically like saying, hey, it's okay. It's okay that you went in there and slaughtered 1,200 people and took a couple hundred of them hostage. It would leave them in control of Gaza, which is unacceptable not only to the Israeli people, but to, but to President Biden and his team. We can't go back to October 6th right now. So uh, it's not, not the time for a ceasefire. We all want to see the war end. And as I said in my opening statement, it could end today if Hamas would release all the hostages, lay down their arms, uh, and, and surrender up those responsible for the October 7th attacks.